Hello and welcome to another edition of Sunbelt Hoops with Nate and Matt, Countdown to Pensacola, and this is episode four, Nate. And next week, the Sunbelt Tournament tips off in Pensacola. We are finally right there. Yeah, it's hard to believe. The season is slow until you're in the middle of it, and then it goes by in a heartbeat, and I'm sure for the coaches and players as well. Absolutely, and when you get at the end, it's kind of like a sprint then because you see the tape in front of you, and you're trying to break that tape. But coming up here in uh, podcast number four, we're going to talk to Louisiana head coach Bob Marlin as Ragin' Cajuns have hit a little bit of a tough patch here, but they still have a path to the number four seed depending upon what they're able to do this coming week, and we'll talk to him about that. We'll also take a look at the big stories of the week uh, app has a chance to wrap up the number one seed in the regular season championship uh, coming up on Wednesday. We'll talk about that. Plus, we'll name our teams of the week. We'll name our starting five for the week. Look ahead to the biggest games of the week, and we got some big ones. And we'll take a look at if the tournament started today, which it will do in <laughs> a week. So, all right, let's jump ahead to uh, story number one, and that is that Old Dominion coach Jeff Jones announces – his retirement. Now, he had actually come back to the team on Saturday for senior day yep. to be there for the Monarch senior, Jason Wade, who unto himself has been through the ringer with multitude of injuries, a once promising career really plagued by these injuries. So Jeff Jones wanted to come back to Chartway Arena on Saturday night and honor his senior who he had signed and had played for. And of course, you know, Coach Jones has been through the ringer, too. Had a heart attack when the team was out in Hawaii playing in the winter tournament there. And he's also undergoing prostate cancer treatment. Uh, so now he's announced his retirement. I can't say that I'm really surprised that he has done this. Well, and we just hope, obviously, for his health and well-being. Um, but they put 6,200 people in the arena. It's a team that's not won a lot of basketball games this year. They didn't know he was going to show up. Uh, for senior night. He showed up right before the game, went out very emotional at center court with the two seniors he had and the one you just talked about went through all those injuries. And then not taking anything away from the game, um, he said he left. And uh, they won. They beat Coastal Carolina, close game, and then blew him out at the end. Uh, But very emotional night for him. I used to love senior nights and I used to hate senior nights as a coach because the seniors, they're done. And you went through so many great things with them and tough things with them. And especially for these two young men, he I went through a lot of physical injuries and stuff like that. And Coach went through his thing. But um, being emotional is completely understandable. And with an almost sellout crowd in that Charway Arena, that's great for those kids and uh, great for those seniors to send them out with a W. Well, we certainly wish Coach Jones the best and a speedy recovery. I had read where he reportedly is He's taken off 30 pounds, undergoing a vigorous exercise, workout routine, so good for him. Take care of his health. And that's going to be a, a really nice job. You mentioned it. Uh, they're 3-13 and 13 in the Sun Belt this year. But remember last year, they're a top four seed a couple of years ago. Yep. They won a Conference USA championship. And it's a program that is supported very well, despite the fact they're last in the Sun Belt. They're first in attendance. They will have yeah. a number of big-time uh, candidates for that job. But our first and foremost is our, our well wishes and to uh, Coach Jones and congratulations on a fabulous career as a player and then as a coach. We'll miss oh, him in the conference. Great player. Great player, Virginia. And then, of course, the coach there. And I saw one comment, Coach Donnie, you said, you mentioned the way they said he looked great when he came to the game. So that, that's good for him. Really happy. All right, let's move ahead to story number two, big story number two, App State. One went away from the number one seed and the regular season championship. They can get it if they can beat Old Dominion, a team they just beat last week. Now they'll play the Monarchs in Boone. It's been a record-breaking season. Last week, 2-0, and beat Old Dominion, beat Marshall. They're now 24-5, and 14-2 and in the conference. Miles Tate had a huge game against Marshall. Yeah on Saturday. We'll talk more about Miles State later on in the podcast. Well, they finish at home, Old Dominion, and then Arkansas State goes up to Boone um, from their game at Coastal Midweek. So, yeah, if they can get one, it'd be great. Old Dominion's going to have a little bit extra juice, I would think, after uh, 
Coach Jones stepping down. Coach Donahue has been the coach, like you said, since they were out in Hawaii. But um, the Mountaineers have been good all year. They've been really good at home. And uh, we'll see if they can seal the deal here. Number one seed is great, but it can all fall apart when you get down to Pensacola. But I'm sure Coach Kearns and company will take number one seed going into Pensacola. And you get the banner. You get to raise a banner, and that's always special. That banner is going to be there forever. So, big story number three, James Madison keeps their NCAA tournament resume intact. I mean, they were on the precipice of falling right out of the conversation. They were down 19 at Georgia Southern. They come back and beat the Eagles at the Hanner Fieldhouse 80-74. So their record winning season total continues. They're now at 26 total wins, 26-3. and three. They're second in the Sun Belt at 13-3. and three. Their net ranking right now had gotten as high as 45. And right now it's 50. They actually lost five points despite the fact they beat Georgia Southern. Uh, but any thought of being an at-large team would have died had they lost to the Eagles on Saturday. And in a weird way, and of course the number one goal is to win the tournament championship and get the sure. auto bid. But for the Sun Belt, in a weird way, Nate, getting an at-large berth out of the Sun Belt is almost a bigger thing than winning the conference championship because that's recognition from the NCAA committee that you guys are legit and we're not just automatically putting you in. You've earned your way in. Well, unfortunately, I saw an NIT projection this week. And speaking of JMU, they finish on the road. I think they're at Georgia Southern, and excuse me, Georgia State, and then they go to Coastal for the last game. So they finish on the road, and obviously, great comeback being down by 15 and a half to win last week. But I saw a projection, and you know, the NCAA now runs the NIT. There's no automatic regular season champion goes to the NIT. But they had him, and the NCAA, I've always said this, has a little bit of a sense of humor with their NIT stuff. Um, they got him against Virginia in the NIT, I saw that. Hopefully that's not the case, um, depending on what happens, obviously, this week and then when they get to Pensacola. But it would be a great accolade to get two from the Sun Belt. It hadn't happened in a very long time. And uh, because of the two games they have left, even if they win them both, their net might drop even a little more because of Georgia State and Coastal's record. Right. But we'll take the two wins and take the chances. No doubt about it. And uh, look, make no mistake, the goal is to win the conference championship sure. in the tournament. Uh, we're talking about, but, but we bring we talk about James Madison in this regard because they're the only team that has the resume to possibly yeah. be considered if they don't win the tournament championship. All right, big story number four, Troy locks down a top four seed in the Sun Belt. They join App and JMU, so three of the four spots are locked down, means you get the double bye. They split the week with Arkansas State and at ULM. You know, since they had won six straight and taking over first place in the conference, they've gone two and two, uh, but they haven't exactly stumbled. Uh, they fall into third place. Both losses came to Arkansas State, one of the hottest teams in the Sun Belt, and both wins came against ULM, a team that, you take away those Troy losses, they've won seven of their last nine. So Troy isn't necessarily not playing well, but they're now in the third spot. But the big news for them is second, third, fourth, really doesn't matter. You get yeah. that double bye. Well, and two and two doesn't sound good, but the two losses are maybe to the hottest team in the Sun Belt right now. No doubt. The uh, Eagles of Arkansas State. And it's crazy how some of the teams travel a bunch for their last four games. But it seems like some of the teams are playing the same, like Southern Miss playing the same team twice in a week. And Arkansas State, uh, excuse me, and Troy as well. So the, I don't know how it works out that way. It just does. But the two losses to uh, Arkansas State are not terrible because of who Arkansas State is at this time of the year. But uh, still two to go, and they're in the top four. And like you said, one is great, but the top four is so much better. You don't play the first two rounds. So here's the thing about the schedule. I'm sure the coaches, when they get together in the post-season meet, post meetings, are going to have a conversation about this. Sure. So, for instance, James Madison closing on the road for, you know, a two-game road trip last week, two-game road trip this week. Yeah. The thing about it is it's not a four-game road trip. It's a two-game road trip, come back home, and then True. go back out for another two-game road trip. So that really makes it doubly difficult. If it was just four games out on the road, that'd be tough enough. But you'd be traveling from one city to the next city to the next city. But it's not like an NBA four-game road trip. Sure. Uh, the travel back home, 
you know, unpack, repack, get back out on the road makes it difficult. So we'll see if they address those four game stretches. A number of teams have had those. Sure. Of course, the flip side of that is you're getting those four game stretches at home too. So that, that's that's the that's the flip side of the argument. Well, we'll see what that happens with that. So big story number five: Arkansas State jumps into the top four party. Uh, it's hard to say they're the hottest team in the Sun Belt because you got to happen James Madison on long winning streaks too. But maybe the most recent hot team in the Sun Belt went two and zero this past week. Nationally televised victory over Troy. That was big for the program. That was big for the Sun Belt. And then they beat South Alabama. They're seven and one in their last eight games. Their only loss in those eight games, a four point setback to James Madison. And the game before that, eight game stretch started. It was an overtime loss at ULM. Uh, There's six Sun Belt losses, Nate, by a total of 24 points. They have not had a double digits loss this season since December 4th at Alabama. And they close on the road at Coastal at App. They likely got to win out this week to get and hold on to that top four seed. Yeah, they're there now. But as you just said, they got two big games, especially the one up in Boone to finish the season. That might make them top four or not top four. Of course, it depends what the other teams do. But uh, Caleb Fields is playing great. He's been great his whole career there. But now under a new system and Coach Hodges, he's playing even better. He's unbelievable in assists. And uh, they make more threes and shoot it better than anybody in the league, and they believe in that. And uh, they're really fun to watch. I'm going to have them um, at Coastal Carolina this Wednesday. So that's going to be a really fun uh, fun team to watch. And they're going to be special when they get to Pensacola if they keep this role going uh, for the last weekend of the season. You know, like I said on last week's podcast, I really believe Caleb Fields is a candidate for player of the year in this conference. Now he doesn't have the points per game numbers that maybe someone like a Terrence Edwards or one of those guys or Kobe Julian has, but he's around what, 10, 11, 12 points per game. You yep. throw in the assists, which are six a game. So that's 12 more points. He's accounting for anywhere from 25 to 30 points per game for his Arkansas State team. Yeah, he doesn't get them, but he creates them. And that's just as good. As long as they go for the whole team, it's all that counts. Totally agree. All right, big story number six, don't sleep on Southern Miss. Uh, They could be a team to watch in the Sun Belt Tournament if they can keep Andre Corbello and Victor Hart healthy. Both are back after lengthy absences due to injury. Corbello was a big-time player at Illinois as a freshman, all-freshman team at Illinois when they were a number one seed in the NCAA Tournament. He was the sixth man of the year in the Big Ten. Uh, after an injury plagued sophomore season, concussions, same issue he's dealing with now. Went back home to New York, played at St. John's, now at Southern Miss. In only nine games this season, he's only played nine games, recently came back from a 10 game stretch, and had 24 point games against Texas State and Louisiana. And since returning from missing 10 out of 11, 6 6 4 Victor Hart has combined for 28 points, 21 rebounds, and 71 minutes in the last two games, and they've got a chance. If they win out this week, they could be the number four seed. Of course, Coach Latner um, taking a leave of absence there, and uh, Coach Cordonia taking over. Um, Victor Hart was averaging around 13. He misses a ton of games, comes back. He averages around 13. Um, Corbello is really special. Um, He goes Saturday, and you said Saturday and Saturday, he scores 24 each after missing all those games. The midweek game, he had some issues um, and didn't play a lot of minutes. Coming back from concussion syndrome and all that stuff, it's tough. But they're going to have, obviously, two this weekend like everybody else. Then they get a little bit of a break uh, and then go down to Pensacola. If those two, as you just said, can stay healthy, they can account for a lot of points. You get one hot guy in a tournament like Corbello, you give him 24 a night, they can beat anybody. I mean, they really can. He's that talented and he's that good. And if they went out this week, and we'll – address these scenarios later. If they win out this week, which means winning on the road at Louisiana on Friday night, a Louisiana team they beat in Hattiesburg on Saturday, and they get the help. The big caveat is the help that both Louisiana and Southern Miss have to get from App State to beat Arkansas State on Friday. And we'll address all of that a little bit later on. But there's no doubt, I agree with you, they can win the tournament. And plus, if you get that double bye, that's basically another whole week for Curbelo and Hart yeah, to get healthier. No question. And let's not forget, 
Austin Crowley's preseason player of the year. I mean, he's a really good player in that team. They got a lot of talent. He's had a great season. Yep. And he might, and you know, he could repeat as player the sure. year after being preseason. He's certainly going to be first team all Sunday. Time now to welcome in Louisiana Raging Cajuns head coach Bob Marlin. And coach, thanks a lot for being with us. Glad to be here, guys. You know, it's Appreciate been a little it. bit of a tough patch for you guys. Y'all were playing very well. I think you'd won 10 out of 11, and then you hit a three-game losing streak. All three of those games on the road, all three of them against very either teams at the top or a team in ULM who has been playing very well. Uh, but you still have a clear path, a little bit of help needed from App State, but still have a path to get to that uh, top four seed. What's kind of the message to your team heading into this week? Well, first of all, we were playing really well, and Nate gave us some love, and we started losing. So <laughs> I'm going to put it off on him. But, no, we ran into that second four-game road swing. We're the only team in the league that had to do two of those. And it was a little more taxing than we thought. We won the first one at ODU, and then we led app with 10 minutes to go and got beat in that game up there. And then Monroe played really well, and Southern Miss played really well. So the league's been really balanced. and. Our message right now is to get the guys focused and, and we're back at home. We've been very good at home over the last several years. And even though we got two tough opponents, uh, you know, it's time to start making some shots and playing good basketball again. You know, Coach, I love watching Kobe Julian because of what he's been through physically and all that stuff. But he's, he's got the been there, done that factor, especially last year. What does he mean to this program? It, Forget the basketball part, the rest of what he brings to the program. Well, he's the legacy. You know, his dad, Wayne, played here for yep. Jim, Jim Hatfield and Bobby Pascal. And uh, Kobe has, has been a guy that committed to us, signed out of high school, got hurt right in February yep. about this time uh, in, in high school, and they won the state championship. And they, they put on their rings at Madison Prep, you know, uh, do it for Kobe. And that's how much he meant to his teammates. That tells you a little bit about the young man. But sure. to see him come back from two patella surgeries and, yep. and, two, and two ACLs, it's uh, quite gratifying, to be honest, Nate, to see him play well. You know, he did it last year when he came back at yep. the end of the, at the, in the NCAA tournament. He was our best player in the second half. And Greg Williams was hurt. Kobe stepped up, scored 15 points and kept us in the game with Tennessee. So that, that was that was gratifying. And then to make one shining moment for him was, was I thought, was pretty cool. But this year he's just done it consistently. And yeah. he hasn't mm -hmm. shot the ball as well lately as he did early. But there was a stretch there when we won those four road games in a row where he was making everything. You mentioned the, the, the game against Tennessee in the NCAA tournament. I mean, he went through it. I think he scored 11 of your 13 points when you guys made that push on the volunteers in the second half and made it very scary uh, for the folks on Rocky Top and nearly uh, pulled off the upset there. It was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, just going back to the schedule a little bit, you mentioned the four-game stretches, and I know this is kind of the first year they've had this bunch up. And when you talk about four games on the road, as we were talking about in this podcast before, it isn't like it's a four-game road trip. It's a two-game road trip, come home, unpack, pack back up again, and go back out again. So it's really, I think, doubly tough. It's a little bit, it's a little bit misleading in that it's, an even, it's even tougher than if you just went out and played four games on the road and came back home. Yeah, it could, could be. Uh, you know, the first group we lost, actually, to Troy, uh, and our, our second conference road game, we lost at Marshall to open, and then we lose to JMU to go 0-2. That game was at home. It broke our winning streak and back when they were in the top 20. But we go to Troy, and we don't play well. We have 20 turnovers, our season high, and we still had the lead with two minutes to go on the ball and turned it over three times in a row. So uh, that kind of jump-started our next game at Arc State, and we played extremely well. Hosanna Katinga came in and gave us a big boost in that game and has been pretty steady ever since. And we were able to, to come back home. And then, as you said, Matt, we took off and went to Texas State on a Wednesday night 
came back and then left Friday afternoon here after class and practice and went over to Mobile and played a really good game at Mobile too to, to get to end that four game stretch. But it's a challenge. Uh, again, we're the only team that's had to do it twice. Some of the teams like Troy are doing it to finish the year, and that's that's not easy either. Uh, but hopefully, it won't be as bad next year. You know, hopefully you can get that straight with your meetings and all. You know, you just brought up Hosanna Katinge. Um, I knew him when he was a freshman at Coastal Carolina when I did their games. And uh, since since the conference play has started, he's really been playing well. But I love to watch him play because all he does is smile the entire time. I mean, he just has a good time out there, and he's playing really well for you now as they're getting into deep in the conference play. Yeah, Nate, he's, uh, you, you've seen him. You know how much he's improved. Oh, yeah. Uh, he went through a knee surgery as well at, at junior college and then had a really good year at Three Rivers last year. And we felt like he could come in and help us. And he's done exactly what we, we thought he could and some. Uh, yep. Very skilled, skilled with the ball. Uh, but he's having the best basketball experience of his career, and you can tell. It's great. Yeah, it's good Fun to see. And you've had to, you know, you've had to have guys like him and Joe Charles, who I think may be the most – underrated player in the conference, maybe the surprise player of the conference, if they gave out an award for um, most improved, biggest surprise, I, I think Joe Charles might be that guy. Yeah, he's been fantastic, uh, Matt. I, and I think he and, and Kobe Julian are both all conference players. Kobe, of course, was two years ago. And then the last regular season game at Georgia State, he, he was injured. And that was the year we got beaten in the championship game. Uh, by Georgia State down in Pensacola. But, uh, you know, b both those guys have played well. And Joe, we asked him to rebound the ball more because we're, we're not as big as we've been. And uh, he's been fantastic rebounding the ball and had some great games. And I'm not exactly sure, but I know last week, I think he was leading the league in conference games and rebounding. Uh, and, and we've said, I've told the coaches at the league meetings before, it, we think he's the best defensive player in the league too. And he's a 40% yeah, shooter. He gets a boatload of steals every game. Yeah, he's got great hands, Matt, great reflexes, and he understands the game. I mean, he's, he really has a great feel for the game. And whether he's at the tip of our press or guarding a post player or guarding, uh, like last year was at Isaiah Moore, we had to put him on him at times from South Alabama, the little guard yeah. is just eating right. everybody up. So his length and his uh, – smarts and his reflexes are, are huge for him as a player. Now, Coach, I'm sure you haven't brought this up to your team yet because you obviously got two big games to go in the conference. But there's a lot of guys, and, and Katinga is the new guy, like in the, in the five, that have been there, done that in this tournament, and were really good last year. How much do you rely on that? You know, we've done this before when you get to Pensacola once these two games are over. Well, we feel like we've got a good nucleus back, Nate. We felt like we were overlooked from day one. Um, and we played like it for mo most of the year uh, in the middle of the season. But we've got to get back to defending and doing the things that, that we did and making shots. Uh, but having our starting backcourt back that won the, you know, won the conference tournament, played in the championship sure. games, you said Kobe and his experience in the NCAA, yep. and Matt said. Uh, we knew Joe Charles was a starter last year. We took Terrence Lewis late as a grad transfer and to give us more depth. And, and Joe took a back seat a little bit. Terrence was fantastic. Uh, and, and then a couple of the other guys. Mike Thomas started in the championship game two years ago in Georgia State, a backup point guard. So we, we feel like the guys that are back uh, have, have helped us get to this point. And I think we will talk about it, Nate, more as we sure. get ready to go. Yep. You know, and you've done all this after losing, you know, the conference player of the year, Jordan Brown, transfer portal in June, and now he's not even in the Memphis program. Tough break for you guys. I hate it for him, but this is what happens in college basketball these days. Do you get a feeling about where your team is? Uh, two years ago, you go in as the eight seed and you get to the final. Last year, you go as in, go in into the two seed and you beat the eight seed uh, in, in the final. Any feel for where your team is? And I still, you got the two regular season games left this week as you guys get ready to go to Pensacola, kind of the pulse of your team. 
Yeah, we would like to split on this last trip again, at least. And we felt like we could get both, but we just didn't shoot the ball good enough. We got outshot from three, and that's something that we've been pretty good at. Uh, and we yeah, y'all couldn't hit a three at ULM to save your lives. Our, yeah. I mean, we went, we, we struggled uh, the second half at App. We went one for 10, and they flipped the script on us. They're not a great three point shooting team. And I think they shot 50% against us and made seven or eight. So we've got to get that turned back around and make sure that uh, we're defending. We were number one in the country in three point field goal defense last week. I don't know if we dropped out or not, but we just got to, to make shots, we got to play better defense. Uh, and, and go in with a, a good frame of mind, and it'll help if we can win these two games this week at home. Coach, I remember Control Garnett, like getting him in, getting them in bunches and getting them in streaks at Pensacola the last two years. So he's got to feel good, obviously, going back there as well. Um, hopefully in the top four, but you'll see where, you, where it figures out. Yeah, uh, Control's done a good job for us this year, been our best on ball defender. And- yep. Uh, in the backcourt, and then has shot the ball well. He struggled a little bit late, like Kobe. Both those two guys have struggled in the last four games. We shot 24% as a team, and uh, we we got to do better in that regard. But Kentrell's been there, done that, as you said. Yep. He started in the championship game last year and uh, made a couple of free throws in the last second to ice the game. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, he's a guy that uh, if he gets going, uh, 50% behind the three-point line is nothing for him. He can he can do that easy. And it always seems to me, Coach, that with your team, you always got somebody who, you know, shows up uh, that's kind of unexpected, turns out to be a hero. You got any thoughts about that as your team gets ready to wrap up the regular season and head to Pensacola, somebody who's kind of on the verge, maybe hiding and lurking in the weeds that nobody expects? That's an interesting question, Matt, because last year uh, at the NCAA practice, Stan Van Gundy asked me about our team, and he said, you know, what about Julian? I like him. And, he, you know, he made that reverse layup against South Alabama, so you could tell he'd watched some film. And uh, and Kobe came out and played well. But, you know, this, this game, I think uh, Themis Folks is a winner. He played really good in the championship game last year, led the league in assists. Uh, Certainly, Joe Charles is uh, uh, can be a force, and then Hosanna is a new guy that brings something different and brings a lot of energy to our team. And uh, he and he and Joe and and Kentrell, I mean, any of those guys can step up. And if we have two or three or four guys play well, we're pretty good. And we haven't done that recently. We've only had one guy play good at Southern Miss. It was Joe. Only had one guy play good uh, at Monroe, uh, and it's just. We, we've got to be more consistent. Yeah, you know, you just brought up Themis. Um, he was like the spark that gets everybody going because he's so good with the ball and can distribute it so well. So you got, you know, a lot of teams have one guy that if he plays well, they're going to be good. you got a lot of different options. And, and it take, like you said, it takes a couple. But you got a lot of different options as to who's going to be hot and when. And I've said this before that, a lot of times in scouting, it's difficult to key on one or two guys for us. True. Because you don't know where the point's coming from. But yeah. I don't know I don't know where they're coming from either, Nate. So <laughs> <laughs> it, it works both ways, right? Oh, absolutely. Well, Bob, the, uh, the tournament's going to be crazy wide open. Uh, I think there's, you know, at least six teams that can win this thing. And, of course, that includes your Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns. And now all of a sudden Southern Miss has got Curbelo and Hart back, and they look – really scary with those guys playing well not to mention the you know the three teams that have been at the top there all along and that's james madison app and troy and then you throw in arkansas state and nobody's scoring and playing hotter than those guys right now so have fun getting ready for benson Cola. we appreciate <laughs> yeah. you visiting with us yeah. today and uh, we'll be visiting with you next week during the tournament all right guys i appreciate it it's gonna be a lot of fun look forward to seeing you thanks coach All right, Nate, time now to move on to our teams of the week. Who had the best weeks last week in the Sun Belt Conference? You go first. Well, I'm going with the Arkansas State Red Wolves. Brian Hodgson, his first year, obviously, um, got two wins this past week. And uh, they're on a little bit of a roll here with two to go. 
They jumped into first place in the Sun Belt and threes made, threes percentage. They're last in opponents threes, but I don't think they really care. They just, they're going to outshoot you from behind the line. Um, they have Caleb Fields, who leads the league in assists and can score the ball as well, is responsible for a ton of points for that team. When you got great um, spacing and shooters that can make it from behind the line, and you got Caleb Fields, who's exceptionally good with the basketball, you're in a dilemma playing them. Do you guard the three? And then Caleb Fields can beat anybody one-on-one. -on -one. Or do you worry about Caleb Fields? And if you go off one side, he's so good at finding the open man, he'll find the open guy for a three. So I think they're, um, they're on a roll here. Thursday, they had six guys in double figures. That's impossible to guard. Friday, or excuse me, Saturday, they had five in double figures and one with eight or nine. So they're spreading it out. They're not relying on one or two guys. And it's really working late in the year. They're buying into the system and a new new system under Coach Hodgson, and they're playing really well. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Taryn Todd, Isaiah Nelson, enforcer down low, getting rebounds. Freddie Hicks, high flying. He had the spectacular dunk to kind of put yeah. the steal on that Troy victory. You got the, the three point bomber, the mayor of Bono, as they like to call him, Avery Feltz. They've got a team, and it's a dangerous yeah. team. And they could do a lot of damage, they could even win the Sun Belt Tournament Championship. So congratulations, Coach Hodgson, on what he's been able to do in a short period of time. So I was going to go with Arkansas State as my team of the week, but you took him first. So I'm going to go James Madison. You know, for all the things we've talked about earlier in this podcast, you know, they saved their NCAA Tournament resume, if that even comes into play. But granted, sure. they're down 19. It's their biggest comeback of the season. Down 19 on the road at Georgia Southern, they lose that game, there's no conversation about at-large bid anymore. So they had to win that game. They came back from 19 down to win that game. And, uh, yeah, so that, that they're my team of the week. They're going to go into this tournament. In all likelihood, they're going to be the two seed, which means they wouldn't meet up with the number one seed, App State, until the finals, sure. if at all. And App State's the team that's beaten them two out of their three losses this season. So, James Madison will be my team of the week. We got a lot of big time basketball coming up with that team still to play here this season. Starting five. Starting five, Nate, you go first. I know we got to pick not five guards, which was tough to do this week because the guards dominated the league in their play, but I found five. Let's start off with Miles Tate from Appalachian State, the guard. No doubt. Um, only 24 minutes and 14 points in their Thursday win, but none of their starters played a lot of minutes because they won big in that game. But Saturday, he plays 34 minutes. He has 25 points. He is not a starter. He does not start. And he gets 25 off the bench, made four threes in that great comeback at uh, Georgia Southern that we were just talking about. Excuse me. That was wrong team. That was... Was that Marshall? At Marshall. Well, that was a close game. That was not a blowout by any stretch. They got Marshall at the end. Um, but like I said, he doesn't start. It shows great depth for their team because they got a bunch of guys they can score. Coach Kearns always says, I have nine starters. Well, Miles Tate is one of those nine. Miles Tate is also in my starting five. The 25 you mentioned was a career high. 18 of those 25 came in the second half. And for the week, he had a total of 39 points, 12 rebounds, and 10 assists. Second, for South Alabama, Richie Raleigh got Samuel Tabe. They list him as a, a guard. He's on, he's on a bender. I mean, he is on a scoring bender. They list him as a guard. I'd love to have a guard like that on my team. You know, when I did this I, every week, I try to think, can I win with these five guys? Well, with these five, I can win. And Tabe's on a roll, no question about it. They list him at 6'5". Thursday, he only had 29 points. Um, 10 of 14 from the field. He does not take threes. He just doesn't. He hasn't taken one all year. That's what I love about him. He does it in the mid-range game. He's got the body to go inside. Big, wide shoulders. So 29 on Thursday. Um, Saturday, not so good. He only had 27 on Thursday. So he's been lighting it up. He was 10 of 14 on Thursday. He was 9 of 17 on Friday. And like I said, all season, no threes. But he's a big-time scorer in the mid-range. And take it, he's got, you either play a bigger guy on him, who he's quicker than, 
or you play a smaller guy on him and he outmuscles him and just takes him to the rim. So Tabe had a great week. He did indeed. 56 total points uh, and 12 rebounds. And so he's on my team for the second straight week. He's in my starting five. So get this, his last four games, he's averaged 26 points per game and five rebounds. <laughs> That's pretty That's good. Right. And, and, and what you want to do as a coach and a player, you want to be good going into February and, of course, into March in Pensacola. There's only two left. If he can keep it going on, he's going to be big-time good for Richie Riley and the team going uh, down the stretch and then going to Pensacola. Nope. Next, leading assist man in the league on a really good team, Caleb Fields for Arkansas State. Thursday, 12 points, 9 assists. That's responsible for a lot of points. Five rebounds, he plays 36 minutes. Saturday, 10 points, 11 assists. Number one in the uh, league in the Sun Belt in assists. Number one in assist to turnover ratio. 3.3 assist to turnover ratio, seven assists. But for the week, 20 assists, only four turnovers, and five to one assist to turnover. So not only does he dish out the ball to his teammates, he doesn't turn it over. That's no lost possessions for that team. Caleb Fields, as we talked about earlier, and I've talked to you about it before, he's yep. a capable candidate for player of the year in the Sun Belt. No, I agree. I don't have him in my starting five this week. Perhaps I should have. I mean, you make a compelling argument, no doubt about it. And I also agree, of course, that he could be the Sun Belt Player of the Year when they uh, hand out those uh, awards next week. Uh, I'm going with Jacob Meyer, Coastal Carolina guard. Good call. Uh, Chanticleer's freshman continues to build his resume for Sun Belt. Freshman of the year, he had 39 total points, 13 rebounds, five assists uh, for this young man who uh, a year ago wrapped up his illustrious high school basketball career as the 10th all-time leading scorer in Kentucky high school basketball history. So, kid can score the ball. And so he's number always two, my starting five. Number, number two, Mr. Basketball um, in Kentucky. And he leads the shot to clears in minutes as a freshman. From, from the get-go, he's been a starter, and he's been really good. That's a great choice. Um, my last two are for Mark Pyington's Dukes because of the great comeback they had with their season on the line as far as an at-large possibly. I'm going with Terrence Edwards first. Wednesday, 16 points in only 21 minutes. Once again, none of the starters played a lot of minutes in that game um, when they won. And then Saturday has 20 points. He goes 0 for 4 from 3, but still has 20 points. Six assists, makes 8 of 10 from the free throw line. He does so many different things for this team, and he's such a versatile player in that when he's not making threes, he can do it in other places, and he can make threes as well. He made three threes on the Thursday game, excuse me, Wednesday game. So uh, they're down 15 at the half. They come back to win, and uh, Terrence Edwards is probably the guy that makes them go among a lot of other good players. But for Coach Byington and the Dukes of JMU, Terrence Edwards is pretty special. Yeah, I'm thinking he's probably the player of the year, although Caleb Fields is certainly, you know, a 1A, 1B type candidate. We'll wait and see how the coaches voted on that. But I had Terrence Edwards in my starting five this week. Uh, Tucker Tigers, you know, I I live here in Atlanta, and so he's an Atlanta kid, played for the Tucker Tigers. Uh, so one of the finest to come out of uh, DeKalb County, no doubt about it, in, in, in the last uh, four or five years. So he's on my starting five, too. My last guy, I'm going inside a little bit, T.J. Bickerstaff. Second He's another Atlanta kid, might I point out. Another Interesting. Kid. Well, we talked to Coach Byington in the last podcast. He said he loves the Atlanta area because of the great town. He keeps going there. Bickerstaff, second in the league in field goal percentage behind Osiaco at Coastal. Um, so that's a great thing to have when you got a guy that can score at a high percentage inside. Wednesday, once again, now the starters didn't play a lot of minutes. He had 12 and 7 and only played 22 minutes. And then when they needed him most in that comeback win at Georgia Southern, he had 17 and 10. He was 7 for 8 from the field. He had two steals and a big second half comeback. When you guys, when you got guys that they had a great start for the season, then they had a little lull. And now their season, as we talked about before, that large was on the line. And they just came back at a place where Mark Byington won a lot of games at Georgia Southern. And uh, bigger staff helped them get that W. Once again, two to go. They're both on the road for them this week. Um, and then they go to Pensacola. So they kept the role going. 
Sandy Creek Fighting Patriots uh, out of Fayette County below Atlanta. If, you, if you've ever flown into the Atlanta airport, their uh, high school is probably about 20 minutes south of that. Played with Jabari Smith, uh, high school teammates with Jabari Smith, the number three pick in the NBA draft. They didn't win a state title. They won a state title last year, but after those guys were gone. Uh, but, yeah, and, of course, his uncle, JB, is the head coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers and his grandfather, Bernie, uh, still in the NBA game at the age of 80, senior advisor for the Cavaliers and a five-time NBA head coach. So he's been around the game, as they like to say, T.J. Bickerstaff. I didn't have him on my team. My fifth member was, again, uh, Nika Metzvatarishvili out of ULM. This young man is playing his butt off after missing last year with a knee injury. Played all but uh, missed all but five games. Uh, had another big week for a ULM team that quietly has been playing really good basketball since mid-January, and it's hard to notice because they're still at six and ten in the conference, but been playing much better. They've uh, you know won seven of their last eleven games. Just knocked off Louisiana last week, and Nika had thirty-eight points and fifteen rebounds for the Warhawks. And I think they're a little bit of a dangerous team. I'm not. I'm not putting them in the category as a dangerous team that can win four games in Pensacola, and, and win the tournament. But I think they're a team that you probably don't want to face. And right now, it looks like they could be in that uh, bottom four, but that could change here uh, by this time next week. Nika, yeah, Nika he's on a roll going in Pensacola. No question. Yeah. Time for our biggest game of the week. Well, there's some good ones to finish the season, obviously, with only two left. But depending on what Appalachian State does in the midweek game, they got a big one March 1st. The see, regular season goes into March. Arkansas State and Appalachian State. That's going to be a heck of a battle. Yeah. Arkansas State with their great... Contrasting styles, too. You're talking about oh, a team pushing... Arkansas State away. with their threes from deep. And uh, Caleb Fields doing his thing in Appalachian State. With their pack line defense, they don't let you get inside, but they're quick enough and athletic event enough to guard you on the outside. Um, that should be that senior day for them. That's their last game of the season. So that's going to be another packed house up there in Boone with maybe a game to get them the regular season title, or they might have deal that in the middle of the week. And then it'll be interesting if they but do certainly, steal it in the middle of the week, yeah, how they do to that last game. Yeah, and certainly a game that, yeah, you're right. Uh, if they beat Old Dominion, they'll be heavily favored to do that on Wednesday. They clinch the regular season title. But to be outright and not share it with anybody, they probably got to win that game, too, to be the undisputed 16-2, uh, you know, regular season champs, although they got the tiebreaker on James Madison. Uh, yeah, I think they'd want to finish strong. They've had a tremendous home Record this year, tremendous home support. That's a tough spot for Arkansas State, as yes. hot as they have been, with five consecutive wins to go in there and close out the season. And so much riding on that, which ties into my game of the week. And my game of the week is really kind of contingent upon what happens in your game of the week. If App <laughs> beats Arkansas State, then that night, Southern Miss and Louisiana could be playing for the number four seed and a double bye in the tournament. Now, a lot of caveats attached to that. That's a big one right there. But if App helps them out and these two teams take care of business midweek, then the stakes are high for their ball game on Friday at 730 Central on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, but the Raging Cajuns host Troy on Wednesday. No easy task. They got to win that one. The, the Golden Eagles will be at South Alabama on Wednesday. Again, no easy task. Got to win that one. But if both of them can win, or one of them wins, they both of them have to win in order to be in position to jump into that four seed with a win on Friday if indeed App helps them out and beats Arkansas State. Of course, Arkansas State is the team that controls their destiny in this entire equation. So, uh, yeah, I, that should be fun. Those Both those games, a lot of implications tied into those two games. And the thing about it is when South, you know, Southern Miss and Louisiana take the court on Friday night, they'll already know. Yeah. I think. 
uh, they'll have a pretty good idea as to whether this game is for the four seed or not. So should be a lot of fun. So you tell me they're just not going to play out the string. We got some importance in this last week. Well, no, yeah, this is the, yeah, this isn't like this isn't the, yeah, this isn't like uh, the NBA where you've already clinched a playoff spot and you sit right. everybody down. You know, App State, like you already mentioned, it's Senior Day. That unto itself is enough. It's Senior Day. They'll have a packed house. They will have already uh, clinched uh, the regular season title. Here's a chance to put it away. No one can tie you. You can go 16-2. and two. Uh, I, Yeah, I, the last thing they want to do is to lay an egg in that final game. So, And the contrasting styles. You got Arkansas State. They're pushing 80 to 90 points a game. And then you got you got App State, one of the top scoring defenses in the entire country, top ten. Yep. You know, allowing sixty five or less a game. So, should be a lot of fun. And you got the last game in the building for Donovan Monroe, the winningest player ever at Appalachian Donovan State. Gregory. Special Donovan Gregory. Donovan Gregory. Yeah. But Donovan Gregory. Donovan Monroe. Donovan Gregory. All right. right. All right. Uh, so, so here's what the the tournament looks like. There's been just some minor changes here. If the tournament started today, first round on Tuesday, March 5th, you would have 12 seed Coastal taking on 13 seed Texas State and 11 seed ULM taking on 14 seed Old Dominion. Out of that group of four, there's no doubt ULM's playing the best right now, in my mind. No, they are, no question about it. And we've seen teams like Texas State come from that first game, go yep. a long way in the tournament. Got so to the semifinals last year. Yep, you get one guy hot, you get a couple guys hot. Everybody thinks, I always remember this in tournament play when I was coaching, everybody thinks they're going to win a tournament, <laughs> but so does every other team. But you get one guy out, Appalachian did it with a guard a couple years ago, um, Texas State did it by just playing great, as you said, to the semis. So it's possible, it's not likely, but it's possible, but you've got to make your kids believe that we're going to Pensacola to come back with a trophy. To do it from the first round is tough to do, but we'll see what happens. You're right, App State, Almonacy. Yep. <laughs> Broke off the chain, man. He was like, he was, was in, in Fuego. And then last year, Texas State with their guard. Um, I want to, uh, for whatever reason, my, my mind is, John, I wanted to say Jordan Mason, but it's not Jordan Mason. But anyway. Mason uh, Harrell. Just, Mason Harrell? There you go. Mason Harrell. Yeah. Mason yep. Harrell just had a phenomenal run there. The sure. All right. Second round, Thursday, March 7th. After a day off for the men, you got eight seed Georgia State taking on nine seed South Alabama, five seed Southern Miss against the Coastal Texas State winner, six seed Louisiana against ULM ODU winner, and seven seed Marshall playing 10 seed Georgia Southern. The problem, not problem, the situation is, and I've been this once again, I always look back to when I coached. It's pretty great for most schools. How bad do these kids want to be there? Of course they all want to win, but maybe. Not having a great season when you're in the middle of the pack, you never know. That's when you really got to coach and you got to get them fired up. Yeah, you got to have the hot guy, but it's spring break. They're in Pensacola where it's really nice. So these are tough games to figure out um, who the favorite is or how they actually play. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah, out of that group of teams we just mentioned, you know, Southern Miss for all the reasons, Curbelo and Hart we talked about already. They're yeah. dangerous and Louisiana's got Bob Marlin. And, you, they, you know, they've been there, done that. I mean, they're a great yeah. tournament team. Would never count them out in any kind of scenario like that. Quarterfinals on Saturday, March 9th. These teams have had the double bye. You got number one seed, App State. You got number two seed, James Madison. Number three, Troy. And right now, that's number four, Arkansas State. Makes them, makes it hard to beat any four of the any of those four teams when they've had a whole week off. But we did see last year, as we say every every time we do this podcast, Two of those four top seeds got beat in the quarterfinals last year. Yeah, and I'm sure the coaches have talked to other coaches, you know, rest or rust, what do we do? When do we get there? Do we let the kids watch the game? Do we not let them watch the game to see who we're going to play next? But they're the top four for a reason. They should win, but you just never know because it's college basketball. But they're playing really well, top four. If Arkansas State can stay there, we'll find out. But um, the top three have been special all year. And based on the seeding, if we have chalk, the semifinals would then be number one, App versus number four, Arkansas State. Number two, James Madison versus number three, Troy. And the finals would be, if we have chalk, number one, App, and number two, James Madison in on Monday. So, 
Nap and Arkansas State are going to play this Saturday. They might play the following Saturday again. I know. That makes for a very interesting twist to this whole scenario. Yeah, yeah no question. Yeah, a, a quick turnaround having faced each other. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I can't wait to get down. It's going to be great, great tournament. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, and we invite you to attend the tournament, men's and women's. You can get your tickets through uh, the, your member institutions. You can log on to any website. I'm sure you're going to find places to get your tickets, or you can go through Ticketmaster and purchase the tickets there at the Pensacola Bay Center. It's a great venue. Uh, they've been here now. I think this is what season? Is this season four or season three? I believe, I believe yeah, COVID was the first one. I believe it's four. Yeah, so yeah, 2020 was going to be in New Orleans and got blown out. So 21, 22, 23. Oh, so this is the fourth year they've had it now in Pensacola. And it's a great venue. You're there at the beach. Uh, you can stay there near the arena. Not, I mean, you're still close to the beach. Or you can stay out at the beach like some of the teams do and bust back across the, the bridge and, and, and be there at the arena in no time at all and just have yourself a little bit of a vacation with basketball on the beach. Hard to beat. And of course, if you can't be there, Nate and I will have all the games for you leading up to the championship. All the games, men's and women's, will be on ESPN+. Plus. So we invite you, if you can't be there, to watch on ESPN+, Plus and enjoy the tournament. Should be wide open. Got a couple of teams there at the top I think are really strong, but by no means do I think they're shoe-ins to get to the final. Sure. Nate, enjoyed it, and uh, we'll visit again next week, and we'll be previewing the bracket and no more if the tournament started today it'll be a for real bracket we'll know who is seated where we will have opponents for sure definitely